And polls open tomorrow across New York City for early voting in the upcoming November elections. And PIX11 is your local election headquarters. This morning, we're focusing on a closely watched race in Brooklyn between Republican City Councilman Ari Kagan and Democrat Justin Brannon. Yeah, a newly redrawn district map, which includes Bay Ridge, Coney Island, and parts of Bath Beach, is pitting these two councilmen against each other. Now, yesterday, we were joined by Councilman Brannon. And joining us this morning is City Councilman Ari Kagan, who currently represents the 47th District. So good morning, Councilman. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. So I'm taking a look here uh, at your resume. You served as the district leader for the New York State Assembly, uh, as the community liaison for the controller for the controller's office. And now you also worked for Councilman uh, Mark Traeger, who you actually succeeded in office. So when now you're looking at this new district, what do you feel are the top three uh, issues that you want to tackle? Thank you. Every door I knock, every neighborhood I visit, people share similar concerns. Public safety crisis, growing migrant crisis, homelessness crisis, growing cost of living. As, as a member of the Common Sense Caucus in New York City Council, I'm together with my Republican and Democratic colleagues, we're pushing and advocating for a common sense solutions to all of this crisis. Let me ask you this, because there's, there's been a lot of talk about you switching party, right? Going from a Democrat, which, which you were elected as, to now a Republican, some saying, well, we voted him as a Democrat. Why did you switch parties? Thank you for this question. I started to believe that Democratic Party did not reflect my views on public safety. I have a 19 years old daughter who, every time leaving my apartment building, and I'm concerned about her safety. I strongly believe that progressive socialist wing of Democratic Party is doing everything possible, so we feel unsafe in New York City. But that was only a couple of years ago that that you were voted into office as Democrats. So that, those views changed just in a short time? My frustration grew over the years. But like, you know, tipping point was like several bills that introduced in New York City Council, like no criminal background checks for tenants, for example, at all. Or like even this year, it was a vote on civil, to create a civilian committee uh, to expedite the release of thousands and thousands of Rikers Island detainees. My opponent voted for it. I voted against it. I believe it's a terrible idea. And of course, I voted against allocating almost $40 million for this committee. What would you say to the Democratic voters who voted for you that feel that you might have abandoned them? First of all, I received thousands and thousands of votes, not just from Democrats, but from Independent and Republicans. I'm bringing people and communities together, and I'm endorsed already in this race by many, many long time uh, lifelong Democrats all over southern Brooklyn because I'm offering common sense solutions, practical solutions, and I work with everybody and for everybody. And people appreciate this. I have a public service record for almost 30 years in southern Brooklyn. Mm. Let's talk about what's happening in real time. You've been very outspoken for your support for the war in Israel. Your parents are Holocaust survivors. You now, the 47th district, which you uh, will could represent, has a very large Palestinian community. Where do you stand on the issue of the war that's happening right now since there was a big protest that took place in Brooklyn? It turned violent at times. There were some arrests here. Where do you stand on all of it? I just would like to correct. I, I, I do not have any support for a war in Israel. I have a strong, a strongly condemn Hamas bloody terrorist attacks against innocent civilians, kidnapping, uh, butchering, murdering innocent civilians. That's what I'm strongly against. And by the way, I'm against it since day one, since the first minute, unlike my opponent, who is in the first statement, did not even mention Hamas in his first statement. Coming back to South and Brooklyn, I condemn anyone who is a Hamas sympathizer. I condemn anyone who is bringing hate or signs United States of abomination or throwing Israeli flag with Magindovit to garbage bin. I will condemn anyone. At the same time, I am against any kind of hate crimes, against any kind of uh, bigotry, racism, hate, whether it's Islamophobia or anti-Semitism. I'm the son of Holocaust survivors, and I always condemn any kind of hate crimes, any uh, bigotry. That's like, again, I'm a son of Holocaust survivors. I want to bring people and communities together. Just to, just to be clear, you say you do not support the war in Israel. I do not support the war in Israel. Okay. I support... Uh, Israel right for self-defense. If some terrorist come into my house, to my home, I have a right for self-defense. Before we let you go, we also want to talk about another polarizing issue, and that's the migrant crisis. A lot of folks in that district don't want any more asylum seekers sheltered in that district. What is your stand on, right th on that? I strongly believe that current approach is not working. Uh, currently, migrant crisis is completely unsustainable, what we're doing. Uh, my opponent and people like him putting more and more billions of dollars into migrant services, 
often ignoring needs of our everyday New Yorkers. We need to definitely change our right to shelter rules. And by the way, now mayor and governor, democratic mayor and democratic governor, agree with this position. And they are in court, the mayor is in court to change this right to shelter rules. Also, we need to suspect some of the aspects of our sanctuary city status. Any criminal violent and undocumented criminal violent, uh, violent, violent criminal should be transferred to ICE, to immigration authorities, for deportation and should not commit more and more crimes, like everything is okay in New York City. We also need to call President Biden every single day to secure our southern border and to restore legal immigration, like it was before he started all this insanity of everybody coming through open borders with no questions asked. But the ones who are here, they're, you're okay with them staying and getting a right to work? When they are here, we need to do everything possible, first of all, to check who they are, how did they come to America, who they are, what they are doing in New York City. Uh, again, providing more and more incentives for people to come here illegally creates even more chaos and more people coming illegally. I am a refugee myself. I came legally here, went through all vetting process, health checks, etc. Why we cannot do this like we did it before? Mm. All right. Well, Councilman Ari Kagan, thank you again for taking the time to come in here. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. Give an equal time to both of you. That's why we're you. cutting it out right here. Uh, remember, everybody, early voting starts on Saturday, runs through Sunday, November 5th. Election Day is the all-important date of November 7th. The local elections matter, so make sure that you make your voice heard. Speaking of politics, join me this Sunday on Picks on Politics. I'll be going one-on-one -on -one with Camille joseph Barlek. She's the mayor, mayor's chief of staff to talk more about the migrant crisis and the changing rules of right to shelter plus a whole host of other topics. Congressman Richie Torres joining me to talk about what's happening in Congress with a new speaker, what can they get done, and to avert a possible shutdown just a few short weeks from now. That's this Sunday at 7.30.